Uh, so you're back at a uh, middleweight. If you get the win on a uh, Saturday night, uh, will you stay in the division? Or are you looking to try again at light heavyweight in the future? <laughs> um, if I win, I'm 100 percent staying at middleweight. I'm not cutting all this weight just for a one-off <laughs> with Omari. So I win. I win this. I'm uh, looking to stay and fight some of the top tier guys at, at, at middleweight and uh, reinsert myself into the uh, the title picture as quick as possible. Gotcha, gotcha. And right along with that, uh, you're you're 36. So now that you're back in that uh, back in at middleweight for this week, how is you know how has the weight cut been coming back down? Yeah, well, yeah, 30, 36. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> the weight cut has actually been very tough getting to the point of like fight week, trying to get my weight to where I, I'd like it to be. Um, I had a bunch of plateaus during training camp where the weight wasn't coming down. Uh, and I had to be super disciplined with food like never before. You know, I used to be able to have cheat meals kind of like over the weekends and stuff like that, and then get back to eating healthy and I'd make weight. At 185, you know, kind of, you know, I wouldn't say no problem, but I'd be fine. You know, I get my way to where I want to on fight week. This time it was, uh, there was definitely some plateaus and, and, and there was no cheat meals. It was very, very disciplined uh, eating, eating and uh, training habits. Right. Uh, so I will say, as far as getting into fight week, my weight is exactly where I want it to be uh, as far as cutting the water weight out. So I'm I'm in a good spot. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, you had your bat, uh, bout against Jack Hermanson canceled earlier this year because of the pandemic, and I know that uh, New York has had some pretty heavy restrictions in place. So um, how has your training been affected, if at all? Yeah, well, New York still doesn't. Even, they haven't even given us a timeline to where we could have gyms open yet. So. It's kind of crazy out there. Um, I did get a bunch of training in New York, but I ended up going out to South Carolina, training at, at uh, Upstate Karate with Wonder Boy, and uh, and then his team because they haven't been closed down. And uh, I was able to get like a legitimate camp in, uh, and it was actually good, you know, you know, being away from the family and just kind of focused on training, not as many distractions. It was, it was a good, nice uh, uh, focus camp. Awesome. Uh, appreciate your time, Chris. That's all for me. All right. Thank you. We'll go next to Gustavo Faldon with ESPN Brazil. Your line is open. Hi, Chris. Uh, hey. First of all, I'm good. Thank you. Hope you're doing fine as well. I am. Uh, what's the mindset to get back to winning in the UFC? Um. The mindset is just to focus, you know, just have a good, have good preparation to where I have confidence in myself and believe I did everything right and then go out there and um, do what I know I can do. And uh, Dana White recently said that he doesn't know to do uh, what to do with Anderson Silva's last two contract fights. Would you be willing to take a trilogy against him to finish off his career? I know you won both of the other ones, but even so, you know. I just don't see how it's interesting at all. I completely dominated him every single second of every single round that we fought, you know, up until the finishes. So I don't really see. I don't really have an interest in finding a guy that I was able to dominate like that twice. And are you still looking for for a fight against John Jones? Well, coming off a loss at two hundred five and a bunch of losses at eighty five, right now I. I am not looking for a fight with John Jones. At some point in the future, I'd love to have that, but I gotta, I gotta make my mark back at eighty-five again and have, get get on a winning streak here first before I start talking like that. And uh, the last one from my part: uh, Do you still think about the belt? You know, do you know what you got to do to get back in that belt conversation at middleweight? Just go out there and be me and dominate, <laughs> and um, I think the performance will speak for itself, and then. You know, um, I don't know how many fights it'll take to get back in that position, but I'm willing to just head right back out there as soon as possible again and prove, you know, prove it once more. So it doesn't matter. I'm just, uh, I feel healthy. I feel great. I'm confident. And um, I'd love to get this fight under my belt and then have another one as soon as possible. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. We'll go next to Ezekiel Bergonzi with Super Luchas. Your line is open. Hey, Chris, how are you? 
I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, my question is, um, what readjustments did you did for this fight? Um, you know, Ahmedov is a, a strong opponent with a few losses and he's on a winning streak. So which is your strategy to face him? What's my strategy in facing Ag Agmedov? Yeah. Um, pressure, um, takedowns, jiu-jitsu, striking, everything. You know, I just, I think I, I'm the better guy everywhere. He's a dangerous guy. He, you know, he fights very hard in all positions, um, but I do feel like I'm a level above him in, in pretty much every aspect of, of fighting. So I just got to go out there and prove it. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting it to be easy, but um, I want to make it, I want to show that there's different levels to this. And how do you think that a winning against Akmedo will give you a lot of confidence to face maybe a top contender in the middleweight division? And how do you reveal yourself after the loss against Reshes and the previous one? How was that process? Yeah, well, I mean, this is my first time fighting somebody who's not in the top five or top ten in nine years. So going against top competition is not something that I need to really, like, you know, it's not going to throw me off. I have a lot of experience with that. That's that's where I belong. Um, so I I just get finished with this fight, and um, and I'm taking him very serious. And then we'll we'll see what happens next. And what do you think about uh, the new uh, fighters in this division, like Vittori, Adesanya, who is, despite that he's the champion, that he's a really new competitor in this division. Now we we take her just beat Tibil and and Canonier is kind of back. So um, how do you analyze uh, this uh, division and? How do you think you can put yourself in there and in this time now? Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, the division is definitely exciting right now. Um, and um, I think my fight will, will speak for itself and put myself, and it'll put me right in the mix you know, of all that pretty quickly. So, Thank you and good luck on Saturday. Thank you. We'll go next to Alistair, Alistair Bishop. Your line is open. Chris, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Thank you. Chris, I just wanted to touch on, you mentioned plateauing through your way through weight camp, uh, sorry, through your training camp. What do you attribute that to? Do you think just the, the, the miles on the body is just getting a bit harder to, to get that weight down? I think, you know, my last time making 85 was 2018. Um, you know, so I had a couple of years of just not really having to keep my body weight that low and, and my body's not as accustomed to getting down quick like it was in the past. So I think it, uh, that coupled with getting a little older, I think probably slowed it down a little bit as like, you know, how much fat you can get off and how quickly it takes. Okay. Um, at, at this point in your career, Obviously, um, I think it's, it's it's one in five. Do you do you feel like your back's against the cage at the moment? Yeah, um, you know, I do feel like that. I feel like that all the time, you know. Um, and you know, I, I'm one in five in my last six fights, which is uh, which is something that everybody wants me to say. So there you go. Um, but it's all fights I was right in there with, and they're all top five guys in the world. And there's no shame in that. And they're all guys that I was doing really well against up until the time of loss. And other than the Reyes fight, you know, that was, uh, you know, he got me, he, he kind of got me early, you know, so I wasn't able to get as much out of that spot as I'd like to. <clears throat> That's kind of sometimes how mixed martial arts works. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I, I just know what my potential is. And uh, I did everything right in training. And I'm just going to go out there and put it on the line and we'll see what happens. Do, do you think this, this sort of matchup stylistically gives you a, a good opportunity to, to show your grappling prowess and really just show off your talent? 
Yeah, I think so. I think this fight's a great uh, fight for me to showcase my skills. Not taking anything away from Omari, but I think against any of the guys um, that that I fought and I'm going to be fighting, I have that opportunity. But um, I just really trained really well for this fight and um, sacrificed a lot, and I, I feel better than ever. With, without looking past uh, Omari, obviously, um, if you could pick up a win on Saturday, what would you? Where would you see yourself in the division? <clears throat> we, I don't know. I think uh, the fight will speak for itself, and uh, I'm going to be right in the mix of things. You know, I'm, I'm the, the top guys. Um, I'll be right in there with the top guys. I think to where uh, I'll have some big fights offered. And, and the last one for me, sir. So, uh, obviously, we, we, we mentioned the the the, the one. Uh, one win and five losses in the last six fights uh dealing with adversity what advice would you give to younger mma fighters when it comes to dealing with adversity through your career you know don't let the don't let the critics and the the doubters and the haters get to you at the end of the day it's not always the best fighter that wins the overall best fighter that wins that night it's the it's the fighter that was better that night you know and that doesn't change your potential and how good you are, you know? So you gotta be able to refresh, restart your mindset and um, keep your confidence um, and just keep training hard. Fantastic, thank you, sir. Best of luck. Thank you. We'll take our final questions from Sue McDotto with Sports Keto. Your line is open. Chris, I uh, hope you're doing well, man. What's that? Hello. Hope you're doing well. Hello. Yes, Can I hear? Well. Hello. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in the lead in the lead up to this fight, uh, you said that you're almost in a must-win situation now. You know, being a former middleweight champion, do you feel that this is the most pressure you've ever felt in your UFC career so far? No, I've had I've had lots of pressure on me since since the beginning, uh, from lots of hype to fighting for multiple championship fights, uh, to coming off of losses and then finding my way to wins. I've, I've had it, I've had it all. And so for me, it's just, um, another day in the office, man. So, uh, your opponent, Omari Akhmedov has been around for a while as well. So, but this will be the first time he faces someone of your caliber, you know, someone who's been a champion before. So what are your thoughts on him as a fighter and him as an opponent? He's a, he's a tough guy. He fights hard. He's, uh, he's scrappy. He's, uh, you know, he brings it. You know, he, he definitely, like, he, he, he gets tired. Um, he doesn't have, uh, he's not severely decorated in any areas. Uh, but he brings, he brings the fight. Uh, before this fight, you competed once in the light heavyweight division. So, is there a future for Chris Weidman in 205? Or will you be focusing on the middleweight division moving forward? Uh, I'm going to be uh, focusing on the middleweight division moving forward. Even though I got to cut some more weight, I just I like that. I like eating healthy and uh, training extra hard to keep my weight down. It kind of makes me feel like I'm more ready for a fight. So, I'm, I see myself staying down here. Uh, last question for me. So prior to this fight, you were set to fight Jack Hermanson, but that, that bout got cancelled. Given the result goes your week this week, weekend, would you be interested in rebooking that fight? Sure. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, he had a nice W over Gaslam. Um, I got a nice W over Gaslam. We both finished him with submissions. Um, I wouldn't mind that at all.